What is up, rock stars? It's Rox, and I am coming to you today with a review for Real Housewives of Atlanta. Nope. I'm coming to you today with a review for Power, Season 4, Episode 3. So, let's get to it, shall we? Okay, so you guys, so my dog is running around, so you might hear her tapping around in the background. I just gave her a bath, but I didn't cut her nails. I don't feel like fooling with that. I'm afraid I might cut her fingers. So, anyway, do dogs have fingers? <laughs> Her pause. Anyway, the show, just be so much going on on the show. It's so convoluted. It almost stresses me out when I know I need to do a recap. So we just gonna try to get it all together here, y'all. Now, first of all, the feds is coming down on Ghost Team, okay? They him up Andre 718 and Keisha, and they're questioning them about, you know, the operation. Of course, they're not going to speak. If Ghost hasn't done anything, as he has prepared his bunch to be quite loyal to him and both of... Um, both Andre and 718 tell the uh, police that Ghost gets people out of the hood and, you know, gives them jobs to do better for themselves. Okay, of course, they don't call him Ghost. They call him James. Angela is, is questioning Keisha. <laughs> I was like, this bitch show enough got her nerve. She is asking questions, surprisingly, about Tasha's and James's relationship, their marriage. And Keisha's like, you know all of this shit, so why are you even asking me? You know, when did he move out of the house? When did he move back in? He was sleeping in the office, right? You know, asking those kind of things. You could just tell Keisha want to beat her ass. Down at the jailhouse, Proctor got a new guy on his team. I guess he's the second chair as far as the defense is concerned. A gentleman by the name of uh, Terry. And Terry's supposed to be the who's who of getting folks off. He wins for the defense quite often, so he is valuable to Proctor and James's team. But I can already look at Terry and tell I don't like him. I am almost don't trust him. He kind of smooth with it. He kind of feels superior a little bit. Uh, I was like, yeah, I ain't feeling him. Of course, Ghost got his good eye on him as well. Tommy take them damn kids to school. Raina, she goes off into class and... That damn Tariq is just old pouting, just old fucking annoying ass kid. Tells Tommy that James probably did it. Tommy says, well, he told me that he didn't. I actually like the fact that Tommy is so um, not crazy when it comes to the family. You know, he can tell that he really loves him. He's trying to talk to Tariq. Uh, but, you know, Tariq is just an old, oh, he's an asshole. So Tommy's trying to be there for them. I know that Tommy is going to eventually peace out that Kanan is around. It's just a matter of time. Just a matter of time. Now, back at the jail, the white man that we was trying to figure out what was going on with him with the sick wife, Tony, he gets a cell phone package, calls the number. He wants to know if there's any information on this uh, Egan boy. The person was like, yeah, Egan and Ghost ran, you know, a drug ring back in Queens. We don't know who Ghost is. And that's when the white guy's like, I bet you I do. Now, back at Tasha's house, you know, defense is talking to Keisha about what she was questioned about. They figured out that she, that the prosecution team is trying to break sp spousal privilege. If they can prove that Tasha and James were not actively married at the time, then they can probably force her and put her up on the stand. You know, Keisha's all like, I'm sorry, Tasha, but Tasha was like, don't you worry, I'm not saying shit. Okay, and of course, we see down at the prosecution team that that is also their angle. They're going to try to break spousal privilege. Angela's there, and she was just like, you know, she's not going to talk. But their whole thing is we just need to put pressure on them. Okay, we need to get them to think that we're going to try to get her to talk. Angela was just like, well, why are you trying to get her up there? I mean, what's going to happen to their kids? Why get their kids caught up in this? And they was like, listen. Do you know him or not? Did he kill uh, your ex-boyfriend, Greg Knox, or not? Okay, and she was like, he did it. So, okay, then. Can't worry about them damn kids. He wasn't worried about himself, right? Okay, so we moving on with the case. So, shit is bad for everybody. The kids is at school, and, you know, um, Raina gets teased that her father is probably going to get the death penalty by one of the other, you know, pain-in-the-ass kids there. And Tariq comes out of nowhere and slams the guy up against the wall and gives him this menacing stare, okay? Jumps at the other fool like, you know what, nigga, what you want? What you want? And he walks out, and Raina tries to run out after him in front of the school. Of course, the paparazzi, I guess they ain't got shit. It must be a slow-ass damn day. They just hanging out in front of the fucking school. They get a picture of her crying as Tariq walks off to somewhere we don't know where. We got an idea. 
Now, Tommy finds out that there's some issue with the shipments. Right now is not the time for shit to be going wrong. Chicago expects everything to be running smoothly. And Tommy is telling this boy, like, listen, don't you worry. I got it. I got it all under control. Shit is real hard on Tommy right now, too. Back at the jailhouse, Ghost, Proctor, and Terry are trying to talk about this DNA evidence. And they finally realize that the way the DNA got up under Greg's fingernails is because of the traffic stop, the illegal traffic stop. It's not in the timeline that the prosecution has um, put up at all. So now they're like, oh shit, they buried it. Okay, we got to get some footage, some sort of, sort of proof that this pullover, this stop happened. And speaking of timelines, first chair is talking to um, the new crazy obsessed. I was just like, Lord, we got rid of Greg Knox and now we got his champion that's got to save his name, you know, make sure that he ain't looking bad out here in these streets. So he is talking, uh, first chair is talking to this new white guy, the white guy from last year that was helping Knox with the cell phone records, remember? So he called you, right? Yes, he called me because he wanted to prove that Angela Valdez was the mole and they're like no that can't be right angela is not the mole we have a phone that was in his apartment that proved that he actually was the mole and the guy is just like oh absolutely not greg knox was a good person he wouldn't do that he was not the mole so the only way that this is gonna work that i'm gonna help you guys out you guys have to investigate angela valdez because she has helped egan and saint patrick before in the past Stop making this be about Greg Knox. And then after he finished talking to first chair, he goes to Angela's office, you know, and he's looking all disgusted. She was just like, oh, it's been a long time since I've seen you. He said, actually, I saw you at the funeral. I could tell you was trying to duck away. And she was just like, yeah, because his family probably don't want to see me. And he was just like, I blame you for this whole thing. If you didn't get involved with St. Patrick and leave Greg Knox and turn him to be obsessed and have to try to figure out your shit, he would be alive today. And she was just like, you know, I know already I blame myself, but you don't have to worry because I'm gonna make sure that I see this through the friend says I don't know why you're going through all that because I already know that you the mole so why don't you confess as the mole James will get the needle Egan will go to jail and Greg Knox's name will be cleared I say all of that just to clear dead man's name I child like this now, once Keisha gets back home, you know, she's stressed out about this whole thing. She's talking to Tommy about, you know, being questioned and what they were asking her and how Proctor tells her that um, they can try to get Tasha to break spousal privilege and uh, testify. And if it comes down to us against her kids, she's going to pick her kids. And I don't even really blame her. OK, Tommy's like, oh, no, 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 don't you worry about it. Tasha will never turn on us. But, you know, it sounds like he's trying to convince both her and himself a little bit. We see that old dumbass Tariq talking to Kanan. Kanan is pouring him some, I'm assuming, dirty Sprite. Why is it always two styrofoam cups, one inside of the other? Do they have ice down in the second layer and then they <laughs> insulation or something? Y'all never have understood what the y'all break it down for me. Y'all drug heads out there. Anyway, he tells Tariq, you know, we about to do this work. Okay, are you ready? And Tariq says that he is. So you already know it's about to be some shit. Now back at Truth, 718 goes down there to tell Andre that the block is too hot and they need to shut down this drug thing. But you already know that Andre not doing that. He tells his girls, you keep on moving this weight until I tell you to. Okay, and don't say nothing else to nobody else about it. Now, next thing we see, you know, new crazy obsessed uh, talking to overly dedicated committee member. And he is trying to tell them that Tommy is not ghost and that you need to, you know, try to try them as two different people because St. Patrick is ghost. And he going on and on about Greg not being the mole. I said, oh, he going to get on our nerves this season. So he ain't going to last too long. Y'all can already tell. Now, 718 goes to the warehouse and, uh, you know, Tommy is trying to get the boxes and shit together. And he tells him, look, we was questioned, both me and Andre. Tommy was like, shit. Okay, we got a damn shipment coming in two days. This is the most fucking important shipment that you have ever had in your life. Shit has got to go smoothly, you know, 718. Don't worry about it. It's going to be all good. Now, back in the jail, as if ghosts ain't got enough to worry about about the white man come up to him and was just like yeah I know who you are you ghost James tries to play it cool and I don't know who you're talking about and he was just like yeah I know who it is I know who you are and I have proof that you ghost and how do you think your uh that Angela Val Valdez would feel if I you know hit him with the proof ghost was like what do you want shit he was like I want twenty thousand dollars delivered to this address weekly he gives it to ghost I make sure you handle that I guess this is trying to I was like fuck how long how much is a damn treatment you shaking them down for real, huh? It can't be more than 80. Is it $80,000 a month? Oh, I tell you, motherfucker, show be greedy, right? I said, oh, he gonna die too. Now, since Tommy is worried about um, what 718 talk tells him, 
he meets up with Proctor and was just like, look, everybody, they getting questioned and everything. We got to make sure that Tasha and Keisha ain't got to talk. I mean, shit, Tasha don't even really know the operation like that. Proctor was like, don't worry about it. They probably not going to put them up there. It's just that they trying to make sure that they pressure everybody until somebody breaks. But Proctor, you know, he... He got his other vices that he's dealing with. You know, Tommy gives him some drugs. I said, oh, that Proctor. Something's going to happen. I know he just nursing his habit a little bit right now, but um, he going to be high as a fucking kite or, or missing somewhere right at the time that they need him. Okay, it's like all of a sudden we seeing him, you know, Tommy passing him the drugs all the time. I was like, mm, this is going to be bad. But Proctor goes and talks to that Terry. And Terry can't find shit on this traffic stop. You know, maybe James was lying. No, James would never lie to me. I mean, how do you know? I mean, what is you just act like he just is impossible for him to lie. Proctor was just like, if he says it happened, then it happened. So I'm filing a motion to throw out this damn DNA. Now, overly dedicated committee member goes and talks to the judge. You know, the judge just got out the shower, got his, his damn towel wrapped around. He look at um the committee member like, oh shit, what do you want now? Overly dedicated committee member was just like, hypothetically, what if I have a tape that uh, has Tommy committing to the murder of Lobos? And the judge was just like, you so what, you got you got that? And he was just like, well, you know, Greg Knox was running off the books, and he was like, oh, so another crooked ass cop? I mean, you want to come? Hell no. No, I'm not. Don't bring that illegal ass shit into my damn courtroom. So fuck right off. I was like, that damn judge is so fucking over all of them. Now, rightfully so, Ghost is a little shaken up by uh, the white man, Tony. So he tells Proctor, you know what? Figure out who this this man is because he called me Ghost, didn't blink an eye. I don't need this kind of trouble in my life up here in this jail. Terry shows up. Okay, oh, you guys started without me? I was just like, well, I don't like him. Get rid of him. Okay, then Angela shows up. And they was like, what you doing here? She's like, I want to talk to James alone. He was like, I don't trust you. No, my lawyers stay. Whatever you got to say, you say it in front of them. Okay, so she comes with a deal. Why don't you turn on Tommy? And we won't force Tasha to um, testify. And if you do that, I'll make sure that your sentence is reduced. He was just like, I'm never going to flip on Tommy. And she was just like, well, you're going to lose your kids if you don't. What's going to happen if Tasha go to jail? You get the death penalty. Okay, your kids are going to end up in the system. So, of course, you know, James is stressed about that. He don't want his kids. Now, that is his pride and joy. He don't want his kids in the system. But, you know, just the fact that that bitch is there telling him. And then she got the nerve to tell him that he don't care about nobody but himself. Okay, even if he got to, you know, put his family up on the chopping block. I said, bitch, you ain't got your fucking nerves. Terry wants him to think about this flipping and um, Proctor was just like no you ain't got to do that because this is bullshit so now Terry and Proctor is having their own um, disagreement then when James is going back to his cell you know that old asshole Charlie Murphy I just feel so bad saying it okay he hands him a paper and it is a picture of his daughter with the caption that says club owner's daughter cries when she finds out her father might get the death penalty and of course that just breaks his heart now, Tommy's nerves is bad because, like I said, he got to make sure that this drop goes well. Andre comes and tells him how 718 came down to the club and tried to shut shit down. And Tommy was just like, don't you shut shit down. Let's keep it all moving, okay? And he says, also, you know, 718 was in there talking to them people a long time. And he was like, look, I already know you don't like them, so don't even be up in my ear with that shit, okay? Just keep the weight moving. Now, we get to see what Kanan meant when he said that they're going to do this work. Tariq is to busy one of the rich students at his school you know play video games with him while um Kanan and one of his boys breaks into his house and steals his sh you know steals their shit so now I'm just like oh is Kanan back to petty theft motherfucker you breaking in houses I mean it's probably not petty it's probably um expensive ass Fabergé eggs and things like that but still I was just like I'm gonna need Kanan to come on up out of you know well, how long he gonna stay in hiding I guess he gonna wait till ghost is gone didn't it just break your heart, though, when um, James called Tasha and her daughter was crying and he talked to the daughter and, he, you know, she said that she was sorry and then he said that he was sorry and she said, are they going to kill you? And he was like, no, they're not going to kill me. Okay, you don't have to worry about it. They can't kill me. You know, she just so upset and so distraught and, oh, I just feel so bad for ghosts. Oh, I tell you, this is going to be a long-ass season. The whole season, he's going to be in jail. This is going to be, oh, it's just going to be so hard wrenching. We get a scene where, you know, Raina's trying to tell Tariq, you know, we got to be right. We got to be good. You know, you skipping school and not doing everything. And Tariq was just like, I don't give a fuck. Don't come in here trying to tell me what the fuck to do. Daddy is in jail. He probably did that shit. Fuck out of my room. Get the fuck out of my face. 
I said, oh, now he cussing. Oh, manish ass. Now, new crazy obsessed meets with Big Boss Sandoval. And, uh, you know, Big Boss is telling him, oh, I couldn't tell you this while we were all in the room. But, um, you know, Greg had called me. He thought Angela was the mole. But, um, you know, he was never able to say anything because then the phone issue got all get, got involved and everything got messed up. So then Crazy Obsessed was like, well, then what if I had proof that Knox wasn't the mole? Of course, Big Boss Sandoval wants to know what that proof would be. And he's like, okay, no, now's not the time. If it ever comes time that I need to say anything, just know I got it. If we work together, I'll get that info to you. <laughs> I was like, your days is numbered, bruh. And we finally find out who uh, the white man Tony is. You know, Proctor tells Ghost that he was ran a big hit squad back in the day. That he has been implicated in numerous murders. He is the real deal. James was just like, okay, well then I'm going to need you to take $20,000 to this address every week. Proctor's just like, what is this? Don't you worry. Don't you ask me nothing. Just make sure that that money gets to that address weekly. You saw my baby girl in the papers, right? Okay. Then he asked him, how much time was Angie's deal talking about? And Proctor was just like, no, no, no. Don't worry about that. We're not going to take no deals right now. So then they go to court. Proctor is about to address the judge and Terry comes rushing in. He hands him a USB. He got something there. So Proctor tells the judge that we got footage that there was a traffic stop. And that is how the DNA got up underneath Greg Knox's fingernails. So they watch the video. And then he says that he would like to move to have this thrown out. Of course, prosecution was just like, we don't know if that could be fixed up or doctored or anything. And he was like, well, their cell phones was pinging off the same towers at the exact same time that this stop happened. They buried this illegal traffic stop and didn't want to put it on the timeline. So they want to throw out the DNA. The judge is like, not too fast. And he was like, wait a minute, judge, I ain't finished. Angela Valdez knew about this information and did not say anything. So then they have Angela Valdez come up. Is this true? Yes. First chair gets up and says, well, she had told us about the traffic stop, but we thought that it wasn't true. That's why it wasn't added to the timeline. So uh, judge says, well, I'll give you guys half and half. I'll let you guys have the DNA. But I also let Proctor tell that um, you guys covered it up and didn't put it in the timeline. First chair was like, well, that'll turn the jury against us. And he was just like, oh, well, what you want to do? They decide to throw out the DNA. And then after that, first chair goes and tells Angela that she's back on the case. Okay, that he was sorry that they didn't put that in. Okay, but she's the most valuable person on the team. You know, she's looking like, I'm glad you finally realized that. And then lastly, we see Terry and James. I knew the confrontation was coming. I didn't think it would come so soon. Shit is moving so quickly this season. You can tell that uh, Terry has thinly veiled disgust for James. You know, James thanks him for finding that footage. He was like, I ain't doing this because I think you're innocent. I'm doing this because the money that I make from this is going to be able to help people. Okay, the real folks that need the help. Look at you, you know, big time drug dealer. You know, you just... Oh, he just such an ass to James. And you can tell James, I mean, it's just he plays the smoldering, barely keeping it under control. <laughs> he is so good at just, you can just tell that he just wants to just crush these people around him, but he can't do it. Bottom line is, Terry looks down on James. I know what kind of man you are. You know, he just kind of fingers his jumpsuit like, <laughs> look at where you are. Okay, and you know it too. Kind of does his arms like, oh well, and walks out. And that James sit down and he just, uh, <laughs> he was just frowned up because I know he want to kill Terry. I said, oh, I don't like this Terry. Are we going to eventually like him? Right now it's just feeling like we're not going to like him this whole season. All right, you guys, let me get off of here. You guys make sure that you rate, comment, and subscribe to the channel. I'm It's Rocks. The channel's for It's Rocks. Everything else I do will be in the bottom bar. All right, all right. So I hope that you have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day. I plan on doing the same. Till next time, rock stars. Bye.